What's the truth about saturated fat? Is it linked to cardiovascular disease? Is it bad for health? This seems to be some of the questions that are constantly asked, particularly of me when I'm at work and when I'm working with clients. So I did something novel. I looked it up. When I say looked it up, I'm not talking about your Google doctor, but instead I looked at the research. And I only looked at major review articles that factored in all the different evidence that's been considered and evaluated over the years. So this allowed me to see what works for hundreds of thousands of people when we control as many variables as possible. And what I found was actually quite surprising. This video is designed to be very much a summary. I've blogged about this in much more detail on both my sites, uh, diabetesdietguide.com and my services page, markgreennutrition.co.uk. So if you are interested in this and want to read about it in a bit more detail, I suggest you go check out those sites now and I'll put a link in the video. So what's the background? Now, the saturated fat debate goes well back to the 40s, and that's when the sort of preliminary research was really being conducted when it was noticed that a 70-fold increase in cardiovascular incidence had been reported, and it was established that increased lower density lipoproteins, or LDL cholesterol, was related to fat. Now, original research, including some famous studies like the seven country studies, started to establish these links between higher intakes of saturated fat and cardiovascular disease. However, in more recent times, the same link has failed to be established, and that's where the confusion has come from. So what I wanted to do today was make sure that I had a good look at the evidence so I was able to report to you actually what's going on and what you should be doing with your diet based on the facts. So why is there a debate in the first place? Why is it so hard to study whether or not saturated fat is a good or bad fat? And it comes down to the study design in essence. So when you're doing research like a drug, it's quite easy to put a drug in and then you see cause and effect. Drug goes in, effect. And typically that will be quite quick. Drugs tend to act quite quickly. Whereas when we're looking at more lifestyle things, you need to establish the uh, causation over a number of years. So for example, you don't smoke 10 cigarettes and suddenly develop COPD. It takes years of smoking before the damage is revealed. And it's very similar with lifestyle related factors like diet. Now let us consider all the other variables that might be involved, particularly if you're doing an observational study where you just sit and watch the population and see what happens, that might also be factored into the equation, like smoking, like physical activity, genetics and all different variables that can have an impact. Then of course you've got various different studies. So many studies won't have enough participants or they won't be for long enough and so they all have their own individual flaws. So what we look at is these things called meta-analysis or review articles where they take a capture of all the data available to them, pull that data together and then try and draw conclusions based off that. But these aren't perfect either because they will have inclusion and exclusion criteria, so some studies will make the cut and some studies won't, and each individual meta-analysis will have a different criteria. And then the studies they're evaluating will have different durations, or if you're looking at something like saturated fat, some will reduce saturated fat by a certain percentage, others by another percentage, some will replace it with different uh, macronutrients, so some will replace them with carbs, some will replace them with uh, unsaturated fats or proteins. And these are just a few of the variables that can exist, but already you can start to see how these can add up to make individual differences and variations between the studies, making it very difficult to establish a cause and effect. So although my research wasn't perfect, because to actually do a proper meta-analysis myself, it takes months, even years to go through these. And of course I need to be producing blogs. So at some point you just have to write something. So if you find other evidence that's contrary to what I report today, Please send it through because I'm always open to seeing new evidence or evidence that I've missed. But I think I've got a pretty good capture of actually what's going on in reality. So what were my findings? So the first thing that I found was there appears to be no direct link between saturated fat intake and cardiovascular disease directly. However, where there is a link is between LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol and cardiovascular disease. So as LDL cholesterol goes up, the risk of cardiovascular disease also increases. We also know that increased intakes of saturated fat increase LDL cholesterol. So, in theory, the more saturated fat you eat, the higher your LDL cholesterol, and thus you're uh, at greater risk of developing cardiovascular disease. 
but there is no direct link. So that may explain the reason for the controversy and the debate in the direct links between saturated fat and cardiovascular disease. The second thing to look at then is if we're not sure if saturated fat has a direct link, what happens if we reduce it and replace it with other macronutrients? And this was actually very interesting. So it was found that if you replace saturated fat with monounsaturated fats, i.e. Um, olive oil, rapeseed oil, avocado, nuts, the incidence and uh, risk of CVD, cardiovascular disease, didn't actually change particularly much, which is not what I would have expected. However, what those foods do tend to do is reduce your low density lipoproteins, your LDL cholesterol. So again, an indirect link, but when you actually look at the evidence, monounsaturated fats have no direct risk reduction on CVD. The next one to look at was carbohydrates. Now, this was difficult in the studies because uh, the reviews said that the studies they reported on didn't actually distinguish between the types of carbohydrates they were using. So they could have been refined carbohydrates, high sugar, or they could have been quite low GI, whole grains, and we weren't sure what exactly combination they were using. So looking at it as a whole, carbohydrates, when uh, they replaced saturated fat, had no additional benefit in terms of CVD reducing risk. So I delved into it a little deeper to see if there was a bit more to this. And actually, I was able to find that when you're replacing saturated fat or even just have a high intake of high pro highly processed or high sugar foods, it has an increase in LDL cholesterol and actually does have a link to CVD. Whereas when you're replacing the foods with whole grain foods, vegetables, fruits and more slowly released fibrous foods, the, uh, the reduction in CVD was actually evident. In fact, one study even showed that as fiber increased, there was an inverse relationship with CVD incident. Replacing saturated fat with protein showed no additional benefit also. Then finally, you have your polyunsaturated fats. These are your essential fatty acids, your omega-3s and your omega-6s. Omega-3s come from plant-based sources like nuts and seeds, but also, and the best source, tends to be fish oils because they're directly converted to the metabolically active versions of the nutrient. Omega-6, on the other hand, tends to come from plant-based sources and tends to be plant oils like sunflower oil and linseed oil. When replacing saturated fat with polyunsaturated fats, there was definitely a risk reduction. Now, it did not reduce mortality, so you lived just the same amount of time regardless of what you were eating, but crucially, there was a reduction in cardiovascular events. So that's things like heart attack, stroke, hypertension, which can really impact quality of life. Now, the authors made a very good point when they said that people with established cardiovascular disease may not benefit from making the switch from, cardiovas uh, from saturated fat to polyunsaturated fats if they're already taking medication to lower their lipids in their bloods, like LDL because you don't get an additional benefit. Although I'd always recommend following a healthy diet at all times. So it seems like the research is actually pointing us towards a prevention game. If you have no active CVD or not taking any medications to lower your lipids, then that's where the, that's where the benefit is seen. In fact, polyunsaturated fats in the Cochrane review showed that there's a 27% reduction in cardiovascular events if replacing saturated fat with polyunsaturated fats. Now remember here, we're only talking about cardiovascular disease. So I'm not saying monounsaturated fats aren't healthy. I'm not saying other certain foods aren't healthy. I'm just saying in terms of cardiovascular disease, the risk reduction is when you replace saturated fats with polyunsaturated fats. Like I said before, if you want to get into this in more detail, check out my blogs, which I'll link to again. It's diabetesdietguide.com, primarily for people with diabetes, of course, um, but also have general information on there as well and my services page, markgreennutrition.co.uk, which is a bit more generalistic in terms of nutrition, primarily, primarily focusing on weight loss. And if you like what you see today, guys, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And for now, I'll say see you later.